Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Manchester United Weekly Bulletin. Yes, I believe it's episode 12, 12 episodes so far. Guys, big up to you guys for tuning in as always. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button and also remember to share. Let me just sort out my lighting guys. As always, if you guys get yourself involved, and if you're new to the channel and you're wondering, what the hell am I doing here? Of course, this is a, a show where we talk about the hottest, latest debates, events, news surrounding our beloved team, Manchester United. Big up Adam Talks Sport as well, who's locked in, already tuned in. Big up to you, saying that we need to get Varane ASAP. And indeed, we do, obviously. Guys... Let's get straight on. Let's get started straight away. Let's talk about Rafael Varane. This week, so much news has been piling upon. You've got Fabrizio Romano tweeting about Rafael Varane. Manchester United um, have, are in talks with Varane. You've got Sky Sports who came out this week saying that um, Varane's been given permission to discuss personal terms with Manchester United back from Real Madrid himself. But of course, a transfer fee is still pending. With that, people are wondering, what is going on? Why are we stalling on Varane? Why can't we just get him straight away? Hurry the F up, as always. But you know, as we speak right now, Manchester United procrastinating FC, procrastinating the transfer, you know, capture, as always. It is what it is with Manchester United. This will take some time. This will take some convincing for Rafael Varane. I know that Varane himself is probably keen on joining Manchester United. Big up to him if he is. At the same time, we know that Manchester United also want to negotiate a fee with Real Madrid. With that, Manchester United haven't done that. And you know our club. We're trying to find a cheap deal with Rafael Varane with Real Madrid. And I know Manchester United... You should know the future, I mean, the history with Real Madrid. Manchester United does not have a good relationship as we speak with Real Madrid. Regarding the David De Gea facts incident, and also the fact that we have not sold you Paul Pogba, and we've made it hard for Real Madrid to sign Paul Pogba. And from that, I know that Ferentino Perez will be bitter and will always, always make things difficult to sign Rafael Varane. It would just, to me, I don't blame them. I really don't blame them, guys. But at the same time, just give them what they want. Give them the 50 million. Why are we waiting? Why are we stalling, guys? Why are we stalling to get something on the cheap? We took our time to sign Jaden Sancho. We took two years to sign Jaden Sancho. Yeah, all these transfers, negotiations, and etc. Now that we've signed Jaden Sancho, and of course, it's by installments, I know that Manchester United is. Um, will be paying um, for Sancho for the next four years in installments. Big up Bruno Fernandes back in the building. I'm going to have to mod you for some reason. And I also have to mod Adam Talk Sport. Adam Talk Sport says, Sancho, why is it, hasn't it been announced? You know Manchester United, they're a business team, business club, waiting for the perfect day to make, make sure that the, the announcement is in line with the New York Stock Exchange to make sure that once they announce Jaden Sancho's signing that will have a heavy impact in the financials, um, well, the financial market in the New York Times, New, I mean, the New York Exchange, you know what I mean. And I know how Mansion I operate, you know how Edward, Mr. Edward would operate, he, he, he just wants to make big numbers, you know. As soon as they announce it, money starts rolling into Mansion I's account. I know what club this variety, this, this, sorry, this Jaden Sancho announcement needs to happen very very soon and i'm tired you know like we really know that Manchester united agreed to transfer and pending medical Jaden sancho had his medical just a couple of days ago and and jetted off on holiday with our boy uh, marks rashford who's also injured we will talk about that later guy but in, re in regards to that i'm just wondering announce it stop wasting our time and move on to the next that's what we want but in regards to rafael Varan, as we were speaking again coming from um, Fabrizio Romano, who said a couple of things. Of course, the Manchester United are in talks. We also have news that saying that Rafael Varane himself is also 
decide on his future once Manchester United placed a bid. And um, we've, of course, um, we've got the people's person. That, um, if you guys follow the, um, what's you, what you call it, um, the, is it the United People, Sam's People, something like that. I think it's called the United People TV or something like that. Of course, they've got their own website where they've released some articles. I, I, I guarantee you guys, you should go out there and have a look. We've got Manchester United bid for Real Madrid. Rafael Vena will be decided on his future within a few hours. According to the Madrid Journal, the Frenchman is widely reported to be a United number one target in centre-back department and has so far refused to sign a new contract with Los Blancos with just one year remaining. And of course, guys, you know that um, he's got one year left. Thank you, Adam Talk Sport, United People's TV. That's exactly what I was trying to say. It's not easy. It is not easy. But yes, guys, as I was saying, this best not store. We don't have time. PSG have put themselves out of the running for Rafael Varane after announcing the signing of Sergio Ramos. So that gives us a clear cut chance of signing him. Ferran has one year left. I know Real Madrid want 50 million. Is 50 million too much to ask for Rafael for someone that's got one year? Eden Hazard went to Real Madrid for almost 100 mil, like right, 95 mil on one year left. A world class defender like that, I'm not wasting time. Guys, you tell me, you let me know. Would you waste time on on Rafael Varane, especially with the transfer fee just being 50 million. It's a bargain. We've got someone like Ben White from Brandon and from I'm saying from Brighton and them man. Ben White, who I don't rate. I do not rate Ben White. But they're quoting him for 50 million. If we're quoting Ben motherfucking White for 50 million, why can't we just sign Varane? That's a steal at that price, you know. 50 M's. We signed Harry Maguire for, 50, for 80 million. We've signed the high world wide for way more. Someone like Rafael Varane, top winner, World Cup winner, four-time Champions League winner, so many La Liga titles, club World Cup title, World Cup as well, you know. You can't sleep on that, guys. We, we cannot let that sleep. Of course, we've got Adam Talk Sports that says we, we can't stall, otherwise clubs will come in. Definitely. It cannot store, otherwise other clubs will come in. As guys, if you're watching, as always, smash that like button. Also, remember to share, of course, to get as much people tuned in to watch the show, of course. <laughs> Let's move it on to other news. Manchester United will try to sign Eduardo Campobinga this summer, as they know that they will face lots of competition next year. This, this was also a tweet from Fabrizio Romano, roughly about last week. On the weekend, he is also stating that Manchester United are interested in and have inquired with um, Cam Vingas Club. Drink break, guys. You know you need a drink break at this moment. Talking like this, nine minutes in, my mouth gets dry easily, guys. And as always, guys, thank you for tuning in on a Friday night, and I feel alright. The party's all over on Reggie Night TV. It's it's Friday night. It's nine p.m. We go down on 9 p.m., guys. Guys, get your bottles up, open up a can of Stella, pour up your champagnes. Let's get waved, of course. With the Camavinga situation, yes, Adam Talks Book says that Camavinga has gone quiet, but it will resurface. It, it, it came about like what last week there was heavily talking about it. Camavinga is a player that mentioned I've been looking at, they would be interested in, of course. He also doesn't have that much time left on his contract. And it looks like it could be a transfer that we could do about 30, 40 million. And apparently, this could be a steal. And I, I will I will put a thumbs up to that because why? Camavinga is a wonder kid. I've seen him play, guys. I've seen him play in the French League. If you like Paul Pogba, the defensive side of Paul Pogba, someone that can play, spray the ball, Deep, deep lane playmaker and also can dictate tempo. Kamavinga is your guy. He is quite young, which I understand. And he will need some time to be bedded in into the Premier League and also into the Manchester United team. But ideally, you want to go for someone like that, one the kid, because 
if you don't go for him now, next season, the clubs, people like PSG, Real Madrid, Juventus, Inter, Manchester City, Chelsea. You know, I have to say Manchester shitty because at the end of the day, they are shitty. So, like, that guys like that will come into him, come into for him. And you don't want that problem because I know when all these clubs go for this one player, nine times out of ten, they will not pick May Night. May Night will lose. May Night only win, even struggle when it's a clear run. We even struggle to sign players when we get a clear run. But, yeah, with that, I think that will be... What would it mean if Kamavinga and as well Baran sign? It means that maybe Pupoga might sign a new contract, you know, with his man there, you know, his French companions, you know. Which I have to say, if they, if, they, if they do sign, beautiful. I will love it. I'll be happy. Adam Talk Sports says, Kamavinga would be a good, would be good, but we need to get Varane before. Absolutely, we need to get Varane as well. Like, before we get Kamavinga, we need that centre-back. But at the, at the same time, guys, we, we need a CDM. We've been crying out for CDM. Smatchic is, is out of it. Got Fred and McTominay, McSauce. That's not about this. And you've seen it, guys, last season. It don't work. It really, really doesn't work. And I'm tired of seeing McFred. I'm tired of it. Even they know that McFred is a thing. And they know that we're not really respecting the McFred. They know that it's a joke as well. So it's something like that, that needs to change. And I, I can't go another season, guys, with McFred in midfield and with a lack of creativity coming from that midfield. The fact that we play McFred sometimes just brings everything onto our own defence. Like it opens us up. It's like a polo. It's like a polo. Everything just go through. Just like the thing that you do with your woman. In, out. Then that's the match you know right there is midfield. In, out. It, 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 it's annoying, but I, I really think that we do need the CDM. It's needed, guys. Guys, you let me know. What would you prefer? Centre-back, CDM. I need to know right now. Big up Bruno Pinani that says, did you hear about the 4 3, 3 change? I will be talking about that. Damn, Bruno Pinandes, you, you're out here ruining my show. Like, it's on, my, it's on the agenda, big man. Right. <laughs> But we will get to that. I did hear it, and I'm excited for that. We'll get into it. Of course, he says, yes, we need to change. Adam Talk Sports says that we need to change. And Adam Sport, Talk Sports also says that we, we need both, which I can't blame him for. Let me get a drink break, guys. Now, guys, let's move it to another news. United, of course, have released the new home kit this week, which was happened to take place yesterday with the new kit sponsor team viewer. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'll be really honest with you guys. I've seen the kit. I've seen the price. I think mentioning that his new kit is ugly, horrendous, horrible. You guys may like it, but I don't like it. Do you know why I don't like it? It looks cheap. It really looks cheap. It reflects... To me, it reflects to me how far Manchester United have fallen. Do you guys remember the times Arsenal switched from Knight to Puma? And that Puma shit, and that Puma kit was shit. Because why? We saw a lot of Puma kits getting ripped up, especially in that World Cup during the times. A lot of kit was just getting ripped up. And I, I look at Manchester United's kit. I just see the material. I'm like, this is cheap. This is disgusting. This is how far we've gone. We can't even produce good kits. Machina used to produce very good, sexy kits back then. And I will purchase that. But this new kit, I am not feeling it. It looks like it looks like a jumper with our printed logos on it. I'm not convinced. Even long sleeve one. I know it's representing um the times of back then, Bobsy Babes, you know, that type of old school type of kit where everything looked like a long sleeve jumper. With just plain and everything. But I, I, I'm not feeling with it. I can't get jiggy with this shit. I can't get jiggy with Manchester United's new kit. Honestly speaking, guys, I, I I can't do it. I will not be buying any new kit this season. Guys, 
don't buy any new kits if your glazer's out, you know. If 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 you don't really care, then do what you have to do. If you if you care about pleasing your kids, if you're if you're an adult, because your kid like, ah, daddy, I want my nine new kit, and you start crying, yeah, 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 yeah. Mommy, daddy, new kit, man, she nine new kit. Then I don't blame you if you have to buy that for your child, because you need to make you need to please them. But for an adult guy, don't don't purchase a new kit. It's not worth it. The price that I'm seeing it at, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. They don't value us no more, guys. They don't even value us. It's like, I, I ask myself, who's designing these kids? Who are you giving to? Are you, is it the Make-A-Wish Foundation? They just give it to a child that's been wanting to design Manchin United kit and just say, yeah, design our kit. Adidas can't be bothered anymore because I, I feel like Adidas don't get the money that, they don't, they don't get value for money from Manchin United because why? We're not in the Champions League too tough. We're not winning trophies. They probably just said, you know what? We're going to give this to a little kid. We, we'll give it to a little kid, you know? You know, to design a kit. Because we can't give a shit about this club. You look at, look, you look at Adidas with um, Bayern Munich and Real Madrid's kids. Always top-notch. Always top-notch. Because why? They win trophies. They care about that club. They're like, you know what? That club makes us money. We're going to do the whatever we want. We get the best artists, the best designers to design Ramadan's kit because Ramadan's kits have never been shit. Never have been. Manchester United, for some reason, we're not doing well. We're just getting kits that's just made from five year olds. Five year olds. Five year olds' ideas because all, all people that's on internships that's doing this for the first time. Because I'm not, I'm not pleased with that, guys. Of course, we've got. We've got Alex. I mean, sorry. Ad, why do I think Adam? Adam talks sports. I said team viewer does not look good. Of course, even my child wanted to go to Turkey and get a fake one. Don't have kids though. I'm only thirteen. <laughs> even my child wanted to go to, to Turkey, you know, and get a fake one. Ah, uh, no. But I'll be honest with you, Adam. Adam, it's just not looking good. We've got Bruno Fernandez. I said I just got it before I found it last week. Yeah, I don't know how you guys think, man. You guys think it looks all right. My personal opinion is that I just think it just, just looks shit. I really do, guys. I, I, don't, I just, I just can't. I can't. I can't stomach it, and I, I, I won't be buying it, guys. If you do catch me buying it, maybe it's because. Of, Obviously, we're going to the next season, and uh, of course, I, I deliver you contents, and I just need to look the part as well because I always try to buy the latest and update kits. But this time, I'm not too sure if I want to buy it. I might just stick with last season's kits, guys, in every match reaction and every podcast that I do. But I'll be honest with you, I, I can't get jiggy with the shit no more. I really can't, guys. As always, if you're eight minutes into into the cut. Make sure you smash that like button. Also, make sure you share as well, guys. We've got a couple of you guys watching. I didn't talk sports says I won't buy it. Um, Bruno Fernandez says the away kit is better look better look good. I've seen the away kit, but I'm not too sure if that's the official away kit. But it does if it is, it does quite it does look good. I do like it. I I do like the color as well, but let's see what happens when they release the official away kit. It better look better, guys, because this home kit, I'm not feeling it. I just feel like it's cheap. It's cheap as hell. It's like you're buying it from Primark. Guys, if you know, Primark is probably like a low-end clothes store, you know, where if you go there, people will start sewing you if you're out here rocking Primark clothes. But these times, you know what? Prima do some good clothes, and I, I will happily go there and buy their stuff. We move on to the next news. Mark Rashford. Unfortunately, guys, Mark Rashford is out for about eight weeks so far. As it's been said, he's, he's have decided to go for his operation. As you know, Mark Rashford is a broken man, missing that England penalty as well for the Euros. He's a broken man in the shoulders. He's a broken man in, in the ankles and also in the knees as well, guys. And also in his back. So Mark Shrashford has decided to go for his operation, which I thought to myself. So you was always going to go for your operation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you decide to do this now. There was no point of Mark Shrashford going into the Euros. As he hardly played. He never played. He hardly played. And when he did play, he looked shit as well. And he just to, just, just to delay your operation to come on to Mr. Penalty. All that for what reason? I believe Marcus Rashford should have went to have his operation and missed England's 
um, international duty and missed the Euros. I know it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. England went to the final, but they never won at the end of the day. We never won. You wasted all that opportunity. If this was Sir Alex Ferguson, I mentioned it, Marcus Rashford, I guarantee you, would not be in that England squad. All that time wasted. It disgusts me. Because why? Manchester United will, be, will not have Marcus Rashford until October. It's been reported that they will not have Marcus Rashford until October. That means we may have to stick with Dan James on the, on the left wing. And I'm, I'm not having that. I, I am not having Dan James on the left wing. No way, guys. No way. Big up to Adam Talk Sports. Plus, Man United prices are terrible. I, w- I went on a school trip. A pen cost six pound. Mansion six pound for a Mansion United pen. Jesus, not even two pound. It's sickening because Mansion United will just dry you out. They will milk you. Bruno Pena says, "I think it's a blessing in disguise." Also, he also says that I don't talk sports. Says that we need him to get surgery. Our attack is still good. Greenwood, Cavani, and Sancho. Oh, yeah, definitely we need him to get surgery. But why couldn't he have his surgery at the end of the season? Soon as we lost the Europa League final. He didn't need to play for England. He didn't need to go to the English club. Because why? He hardly played. And when he came on, he looked injured. Waste of time. It was it was a waste of time for Marcus Rashford to be playing for England. I hate that, you know. And I did, don't like that. We, we What did we achieve with Marcus Rashford in England? Nothing. We couldn't use it. Sancho can play on the left wing. Yes, Sancho can play on the left wing. And we can also have Mason Greenwood on the right. Marshall can also play on the left wing and also have Sancho on the right. I'm looking forward to this, guys. I'm looking forward to this. Sancho, Marshall, Cavani, Greenwood. Spicy, guys. It's going to be saucy. You guys will enjoy that. You will enjoy the football as long as the football, in terms of Manchester United, improves. As long as Oli can get someone that can improve Manchester United going forward with the ball and the ball retention. Because our problem, guys, is going forward with the ball. Of course, uh, imagine Oli having so much attacking talent. We've got Bruno Penantes that says as hashtag Paul Pogba out. And Adam Talk Sports says Ad- Ahmed will bring the Ivorian spice. Yes, definitely. Adam, my Ivorian done. I, Ahmed will definitely bring the Ivory Spice to Manchester United's wing. Uh, Bruno Pernandes, hashtag Pogba out. We still need Lampile regardless. Honestly speaking, guys, as much as you guys want him out, I don't see Manchester United replacing him with the, with his same quality. I'll be honest with you guys. Paul Pogba is like, it's three players in one. A number six, number eight, and ten. You've got the talent. He just needs the, the right players around him. And I know it's been so many years and we're all frustrated. But at the same time, I always say this before, guys, Bruno Fernandes, Manchester United have been an inconsistent team for God knows how long in terms of performances. Yeah. So when you're inconsistent, it's going to be a lot of players that's going to be inconsistent. And you can't blame that on just one player. You can't just say, oh, but Pogba, you know, I don't like him because he can't, he's inconsistent. Manchester United are inconsistent in general. You guys can agree with me on that, that Manchester United are inconsistent with their football, with their performances. You've seen in the last couple of seasons, you know, there's so many times we've been playing shit. A lot of players, six or seven players in one match day will be playing shit. And you're thinking, this this, this, this can't run. How is it that possible that six or seven players are playing shit today? This doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, Adam Talk Sports says that thoughts on Kieran Trippier... I'll be honest with you, Adam, talk sports. I like Trippier, but at the same time, do we need a Kieran Trippier? Do we need a Kieran Trippier when we've got someone like Dalo that can also play right back, that can um, deputise for Aaron Wan-Bissaka? Kieran Trippier is excellent going forward as well. We we do know that. And he's in, probably improved playing for Atletico Madrid, Diego Simeone's defensive style football. He probably improved defensively. So, yeah, do we need him? I just don't know. Like, I feel like we need to cover up the other areas. Centre defensive midfielder and centre back. And then we can think about the striker, maybe add another top quality striker and also add a right back as well. I do feel like Aaron Bissaka needs someone to help him, deputise him. I, I won't begrudge you that and I won't deny you that as well. I, I, will be, I agree with you. You do, do need someone like that. But my thoughts on Trippier... 
It'll be a great addition if he signs. I don't. I, I can fuck with that. I can mess with that. Bruno Fernandez still saying so. Pogba then run me up. Camera finger. Listen, mate. <clears throat> you can you can you can sell Pogba, but it will be a mistake. You know what's embarrassing? Letting Paul Pogba go on a free, signing for eight for almost eight EMs world record fee, and then letting him go again for fee for free or selling him. It's an embarrassment to mention that. It just shows that we, we're not good enough to have players like that and make them excel. We're not good enough. It's an embarrassment. Because for Pogba to come and go twice, shame on us. Shame on us. And I know he goes elsewhere. He will bang, just like the way you saw him bang for France. And people say, why don't he play the same way for France? Do do mention I have a Kante? Do mention I have an Mbappe? Do you mention I have a Varane? Possibly a Kimpembe, a um, what you call it, Lucas Hernandez. You know, do you mention I have that? They really don't have that, so we can't complain about that. We can't complain about Paul Pogba's performance for France. We don't have none of that. We we have Jokemans in our team. We've got people like Daniel James. We've got Phil Jones. We've got people in the midfield like McFred that Pogba plays with. The only good decent player that he plays with in the midfield is Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> Big up Bruno Fernandes as well. But yes, the only player that we play in midfield is Bruno Fernandes. That's really good. Apart from that, who can hang with Paul Popper? No one really can. And it's frustrating as well. When you sit, you, you play in midfield and you look to your left and you've got someone like McTominay that leaves with the ball. you got someone like Fred that can't really pass the ball. It, it frustrates you and he doesn't get the best out of you. And look at last season. We played Paul Popper on the left because we can't get, him, get the best out of him in the middle. Whereas when he plays for France, he plays on the right centre mid. He doesn't need to play left centre mid like people ask for because he plays wherever he wants. Left centre mid, right centre mid, number 10. Guys, I understand that, of course, you've got your problems with Paul Popper, but don't, don't sleep on him. Don't sleep on him, man. He's integral to Manchester United if they want to go anywhere further, you know, in life, you know. And then, of course, he says, he said, that, he said, I've heard shout about to San Bay. And we will speak about Jusana Bay. Bruno Pena says, do you think Charlie McNeil will break through next season? I, I don't know because I'm looking at Oli Gunnar Solskjaer bringing in the youngsters through. He's hardly done that. He's hardly done that at all, man. You look at you, you look at last season, how many youngsters came through? Not that much that you can remember. You know, Shola Shortori came through, but he hardly played him. Who else came through? Um, Hanno Boletta, last game of the season, and he showed how good he was. Like he should have been involved in Manchester United last season, throughout. And I hope he's involved this season. But there's potential news that he may go on loan. And do you want that, guys? No, I want um, Hanno Boletta. I, I don't know why I call him um, Hanno Boletta. It's just from the film, isn't it? Mejbri, Hanno. Bo Hannibal Mesri, whatever his name is, yeah. I want him in the first team. Straight away, playing, getting involved, because I, I I can see him doing big things, guys. As always, guys, 29 minutes into the cup, a couple of you guys watching, about 12 people watching. Make sure you smash that like button. Also, make sure you share as well. And also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. But yes, Alenga came in as well. Actually, Alenga came in, yes. But that's towards the end of the season. What happened to the whole entire season? So why is it towards the end of the season when you want to rest place for your Europa League final that you bring these youngsters through? Like, I would have loved to see um, next season if we can get um, James Garner, if he doesn't go on loan into the team, then yeah. With Charlie McNeil, I see him doing things, but I don't know if he'll break through to Manchester United's team for next season. I don't know because our, our, our manager... Doesn't really favour these youngsters too tough. Let's be real, man. He, he likes to keep with his insurance blanket, which is McFred and the Daniel James, you know. Even when they're injured, like Mark Rashford is injured, he still wouldn't test the waters and play these youngsters. But I, I hope that Charlie McNeil gets his opportunity, gets his debut next season. And it's also said that Adam talks also said it was warm today. Gonna be even warmer tomorrow. I am talking about the sun. Yep, so definitely, definitely. And of course, Bruno Penanis says, For for me, once shame on you. You you feel me twice, shame on me. See, you fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, I know that saying. Fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, shame on me. 
Look at Manchester United. If you lose man, if you lose Paul Popper twice, shame on you. So with the W good CDM Paul Pogba would be good. Yeah, I know. Let's be fair. It's impossible to sell Phil, Phil Jones. Listen, can we swap? If we can't sell Phil Jones, I've always said this. Can we swap Phil Jones with an attacking coach at Barcelona or Ramji? We just go to them or Manchester City is one of their top attacking coaches. But listen, listen, guys, listen. Or go to a club like Olympic Leones that plays good attacking football. Any team that plays good attacking football and has got a, a top quality attacking coach. Let's just go there and say, listen, guys, we don't, we don't, we want your coach. I know we may have to pay compensation, but guess what? Here's the deal. Can we give you Phil Jones in exchange for your coach, attacking coach so you don't pay no fees? I know they'll say no, because Phil Jones is shit. No one wants Phil Jones. Nobody wants Phil Jones, I'm telling you now. You couldn't even swap him for a packet of crisp. Honestly, the guy will probably say, no, you know what, yeah, man's going to keep my packet of crisp. You keep Phil Jones. Like, this packet of crisps is even worth more than Phil Jones right now, because he's that shit. No one wants him because of his contract. <laughs> Releasing him will cost us too much money. We he signed a five year deal not too long ago, about two years ago, and that was on under our manager Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's watch. Yeah. Big up, Kyle Wayne says our team is dead. <laughs> says the manager has the manager has to 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 go. I think he means the manager has to go. And of course, Adam talks says that Elenga. He was talked about Anthony Elenga and Ghana. Centre back CDM possibly, hopefully one day. Oli has to go. Yep, that's what he meant. Release him. That's that's to do with Phil Jones. Big up to you, man. How Wayne says that we don't need Jones or Oli. Let's get rid of both of them. Let's get rid of the um, the coaches as well. But in 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 this news, Manchester United have signed a new coach. That's to do with set attacking set pieces. Do you know that we concede goals defensively? Well, how about we get a defensive coach as well that's to do with defensive set pieces so we don't be doing these zonal markings in, in the, for corners and set pieces? How about that? Attacking set pieces that we hardly even score anyways. What are we going to do? How many times have we um, crossed the ball for corners and Maguire's not at the end of it? And we, we, we need ball retention coaches. We need some of that. Why don't we get ball retention coaches? Why don't we get attacking phases coaches? Attacking co proper attacking coaches so that we can stop playing attacking football like we did before. The Manchester United way, you know, attack, attack, attack. Why don't we do that? It really pisses me off, guys, you know. Drink break. You know, as you black boy, you got to keep the mouth moisturized, guys, you know. Your ladies love with it when your mouth is moisturized, you know. You get me, guys? Wink, wink. Anyways, guys, big, moving on to, of course, what Adam talks sports and also Bruno Pernas was mentioned earlier on. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is looking to switch Manchester United tactic to a 4-3-3 next season. With that in mind, you're thinking that maybe because um, Sancho's, Sancho is coming in, Maybe he's going to sign a CDM so we can play Bruno and Pogba as two eights, two box to box or whatever he wants to do, play him as a six or eight or number 10, whichever way, you know. Maybe he wants to do that. Maybe he wants to get Kamavinga in as well to play the 4 3 free way, play attacking football. Because we saw that happen at the start of the season, last season until Manchester United got packed in by Tottenham and then he reverted to 4 2 3 1 and went into his shell. Only going to social. So if Oli does do this, it means that Manchester are probably trying to change their style of play. So let's see what happens. I, I, I'm looking forward to this. If this is true, four three three is what we've been calling for. We've been craving for that. Oli, play four three three, please. This four two three one defensive style. I I dislike it. I'm a I am a big fan of four three three. You ask me, guys. You play me on FIFA, it's four three three. You see me play for manager, it's four three three. All I know is four three three. Those triangles mean a lot to me, you know. Those interplays means a lot to me. Ask anyone that's played against me on FIFA, they know that I'm a four three three man. That I like playing in triangles, passing the ball, keeping possession. 
And then Talk Sports says that Marshall will ball out with Sancho, definitely. And of course, Marshall can play. He's an intelligent player. He likes to interplay and link up play. So with that, I, I definitely could see Marshall playing with um, Sancho, creating good chances all in. With Sancho, they're an intelligent player, man. Damn, man. Then Adam Talk Sports, don't, don't do this. Don't say... Has Sancho failed a medical? He has not failed a medical. He's definitely passed it. Manchester United just waiting for the right time to announce it so he can affect the New York Stock Exchange. As soon as they announce it, you know, it will stop bankrolling some money into Manchester United's bank account. Carl Wayne says that LL well, Oli can't play 4 3 3. We shall see. We definitely shall see. He also said that we need to get a manager that, that, that did improve our young players. You know, we do need to get a manager that could improve our young players because. I'll be honest with you. I believe Sancho, I mean, no, Greenwood has improved on his own in terms of evolution, you know, because you're always going to improve if you continue playing football week in, week out. Look at, um, the only thing, only hasn't improved, look at the way, um, um, sorry, look at the way Mason Greenwood has performed at the start of the season. Look at the way Marshall has performed during this season as well. Not the best, you know, and you think that they can improve them. Thinking that our manager is an attacking coach as well, he was, um, a striker, he could definitely improve them in that aspect. You know, I expect major thing from um, even people like um, Mark Rashford. His, his his way of play. I don't understand how our, our manager used to be a striker doesn't have the balls to tell Mark Rashford. Can you stop crashing into the walls, Marcus Rashford? Do you know stop doing stop doing the Matt Marcus Rash Bandicoot type of behavior? Because because you keep doing that all the time. Like I'm sure you would have taught him to to not do that. You know. He doesn't actually dribble properly, but he doesn't do that. Mark Trafford stays the same. Just keeps giving the ball away. Carl Wayne says that Oli reminds me of Southgate. I always call him Gareth Solskjaer, you know. Big ups to Adam Talk Sports as a few me with my conclusions. They need to announce him soon. I, I know. They will announce him soon so you can just calm yourself down and just love it. We've got pros only. I says, what do you think about Eric Ramsey, the new coach? I was just speaking about that, pros only. Eric Ramsey, a new coach that was from Chelsea to improve our attacking set pieces, you know, where we also have problems with our defensive set pieces, pros only. You know that we play, we play zonal marking when it comes to corners, right? Don't we need a coach for that as well? Well, so what? We need a coach for attacking set pieces and etc. What's that going to do? What's that really going to do? Oh, we're going to score some goals. Are we really going to score some goals? Because for some reason, we can't get the ball to Maguire's big head. And Maguire's head is not hard to miss. It's a slab head, for God's sake. Get it on top. We got, But bringing him in, I was hoping for an attacking coach, a proper attacking coach that can improve our ball play. We needed that. But no, he didn't give us that. But I hope this is the start of a new beginning, you know, of Manchester United trying to rectify where they've gone wrong. And with Oli doing that, he's there on the helm. You know, what can we say? We're just going to love it, you know. Once Carway says 100, you know. Bruno Pernanda says, man, I love the stream. Big ups, love to you guys. I need to mod you guys as well, guys. So at one point, next time you're on the stream, you will be a moderator. You can actually have the power to delete men's mess comments as it flows, you know, any comment you don't like, you delete that shit. Any disrespect, you delete that shit. You pull them up. You can block people. You have that power, guys. In fact, I should be doing that for you guys right now as we speak, you know. But, yeah. As I was saying before, let's move it on to, um, of course, United giving permission for Alex 2 and Sembe to go out on loan. And one thing is, I have to say, guys, with that news, with to say they're going out on loan, giving them permission. Why? Why is a 23-year-old going out on loan? I I don't I I don't like that. I really, really don't like that. That 23 year olds still can't make it. At the age of 23, guys, it's just really important that um you should be playing first team football for your team. 23 and you're still not able to make the first team. I know that. Tuesday Bay has been injured a quite a couple of times. You know, he's got each injury prone. But if you can't make it at Manchester United, you know, at this at this day and age, at this age, you're going to have some problems. 
you really will have some problems. And 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 if if it's like that, I don't think you're supposed to be at Manchester United. I think it's time for him to move on. Guys, what do you what do you think? You let me know. Do you think it's time for to Sanabe to move on? Because he's not getting it. He's not getting the opportunities. He's had so many opportunities to get the opportunity last season, and it's time he's failed us. So I just don't know. Bigger Adam Talk Sports says I've got to go now. Batteries on one percent, but I, I turned on the notification. You gotta turn it on. You know, you are now a mod. And everyone that's been on the stream are now mods, you know, including new pros only. You're now a moderator for this channel. We're moving on again, guys. Of course, we've got according to the express. United have let Roma know that Alex Tellers is not for loan at all. They cannot loan him. And I, when this news came out on from the Express this week, um, with this Alex Tellers potentially going out on loan for Roma, you know what, Jose Mourinho, how dare you try and get a loan, loan our players, man? Get out of the way, bro. Like, you're not supposed to be doing that. And I hope it doesn't go through because I, I, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near a big fan for Jose Mourinho, you know? Definitely not a big fan for Jose Mourinho anymore. You know, I don't like Mourinho. You know, he can piss off for all I care about. You know, all this respect, respect, all of this stuff. You know, I'm glad you're no longer a manager, and I never wanted you. And I hope Manchester never ever go into business with Jose Mourinho unless you want Phil Jones. We can definitely do business. You know, fact if you want it for free, we'll give that to you, bro. We'll, we'll pack his bags for you. I will personally pack his bags for you and send him there. You know, I'll, I'll pay for his ticket even if I don't have money. I'll find a way. I'll take a loan just to pay for Phil Jones ticket just for him to go to, to, to Roma. I'll take a mortgage loan to buy him a house there and put that on me just to get rid of Phil Jones. That's that's what I will do to get rid of Phil Jones. Pros only says it's a PR thing. Remember youth courage and success, you know, that's straight there, you know, my slogan, I've got youth courage and greatness, you know, because Greatness is all that's what, that's what it's really about, guys. Alex Tellez, you know, I don't see it happening. I really don't see it happening, you know. Um, definitely not going to get Tellez at all, man. So, I mean, definitely not going to get Tellez on, on loan to Roma. Definitely. We need Tellez. It got Luke Shaw playing. It got Luke Shaw taking things serious, you know. Now that Luke Shaw's really showing himself, Tellez should stay because I feel like Tellez has a big role to play next season, you know. Him, sure. I, I rate Tellers. I think he's an exceptional player. I see the quality in him, especially on the boys' delivery. He's got so much to offer. Bruno Penanda says to Sanabe should leave. There is no, there is too much competition considering Varane is is a ninety percent deal. Yep, definitely. I know that. I know Cowan says LOL for free. No, honestly, man, yeah, we'll get we'll give him give him to Roma for free. You know, they take all our rejects. Roma's been taking our rejects. They've taken Smalling. They've taken, uh, I, be I believe, who else is there? They've got Sanchez there as well. I'll, no, 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 no. That's Inter. Um, who, someone else is there. Is it? I'm trying to think. I know someone else is there. Not just, not just, um, not just Smalling. There is someone else that used to play for Manchester United. I think Damian. Either is Damian's either at Inter or Roma. So they, they, they can take over here, and they've taken a lot of Premier League rejects as well. You know, you've got Mkhitaryan there as well, a couple of other men, a couple of joke men. That's their guy. But guys, again, let's end it as well. You know, England, let's end it with England round up. Of course, England losing the Euros 2020 final, a hard day for England as well, for us as well, our nation, where we thought we was almost there, but Italy done it. A lot of um, racial abuse to our black players. We stand with you guys. You know, you know, everyone's parents don't tolerate racism. You know, if you want to be racist, don't come here because I will shut you down and I will really tell you to come outside, bro. You know, meet me outside. You know, I'm out right in the corner because I don't play. I don't play around with that if you want to racially abuse me. I, I'm, out, I'm out here. I'm out here. You know, I'm out here. I've been out here. A lot of men know that I've been out here. Like, oh, I will, I, will, I will fight you for this kind of stuff, you know. I don't take, I don't tolerate racial abuse at all. I don't. And it's a shame, you know, because as well, England are trying to show themselves as a country that's not racist, but you are. You are racist at times, you know. We are a racist nation, you know. We are, and it's a shame. It's a shame. You know what? 
Big up to England. Big up to the three young kings because you know what? They took England to their second final in a major tournament. None of the other men's done it. None of your Wayne Rooney, Michael Owen, David Beckham, your golden generation are full of born breaded English men's took you to a final. No, they're taking you to a semis, but they've never taken you to a final. This mixed race breed of a team, England, right now with bare lies, bare immigrants from all different type of um, nations, you know. Because the only three English players that's there, I believe, is Harry Maguire, Pickford, and probably John Stones. There's a out uh, everyone else. Everyone else is an immigrant, Im immigrated from another. You look at Jack Grealish as well. He, he, he can, I believe, Republic of Ireland left that team to come to play for England or something like that. Um, I think so. Ireland, Northern Ireland, whichever one. And same as um, Declan Rice who was playing for Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland that that, that 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 decided to ditch that team and play for England. A lot of players you got. You got a lot of players that's you know that's that's kind of half breed you know i've got like players uh, mums and dads from different countries you know so you know england for you to racially abuse your black players you know you needed your black players to get through to the finals you've got ryan sterling who was born in jamaica that plays for england so like guys let's be real the way the hate is not needed like where is the love you know you know people are dying out here you know people children's crying you know and you, you know and you're racially abusing people like i might hear call in black ips like where is the love where is the love? You know, where is the love out here? You know, it's about love out here. You know, and when you've got our stupid politicians trying to say that they don't condone racism, kiss my ass when you guys were telling man to boo us. You know, when we're out here taking a knee, you know, you're out here pretending the fans to boo us, but you after that, you're thinking we don't condone racism. What hypocrites, man. Go suck, suck a bull's um, ugly patel, you know, about pretty patel. You know what, pretty. Which I mean, sorry, ugly. Let me tell you something. You think you're white, isn't it? Because you got a white husband. You ain't white. You're Asian. Remember that. You're Asian. You're not white. When it comes down to it, they're going to tell you to get the hell out. See, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, you know. Ugly Patel, you know. Out here talking shit as well, thinking that you are Caucasian, you know. Just because you got a white husband it means you can fit in. You know, they know they always remember that you're Asian, you know. Even when you go to those meetings, even when you go to the House of Parliament, they're always going to remember and look at it and say, This 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 white woman that's trying to pretend to be white Asian girl, she ain't no she, she ain't a part of us. They'll kick you out. Big man saying Bruno Planners. No, no, honestly speaking. And you got um that dickhead, that douchebag, uh, about restriction. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't know control system, you know. The guy that couldn't even handle COVID, you know. The guy that couldn't even handle Brexit, you know. Uh, uh, his big self, like trying to say, oh, yeah, well, we definitely don't control racism, you know. You're the same guy that said, oh, we should boo. They should, the fans should be. Oh, I think that the fans are entitled to boo if, if they want to, you know. I, I also think that the being another thing is a, it's a political thing, you know. Uh, you, you fat guy, you fat, fat. Guy, you know, you know, I don't, I don't like to insult that people at all, like, but you know, man, ain't about that, you know, all sizes matter to me, you know, all size matters to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you, you're a joke, man, you make me sick, and of course, the prince as well. You forgot that about what's it called Archie, that that comment about Archie, and you're out here saying we don't, uh, we do not condone racism, um, unfortunately, the royal family don't condone this. Archie, your brother, your brother's wife, may I remind you? Mm -hmm. mm. On that note, guys, I'd like to end the show. I'd like to thank you for watching this week's Manchester United Weekly Bulletin. This has been your weekly bulletin. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Remember to smash that like button. Also, remember to share, subscribe as always. Last but not least, remember to follow the official Instagram account of Red United TV, which is Red United TV 1, baby. And also, remember to follow the official TikTok account of Red United TV, which is Red United TV. And also, remember to follow my personal Instagram account, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. And, and again, we'll catch you next time. Monday, we're back with the, the catch up, you know. Now we're back with Manchester United, you know. We can talk about pre season, we can talk about the transfers, we can get other people's mind involved as well. But... 
I know. Thank you. You know how we do. You know how we do. You know how Ivor and Twice does. I'm out here to entertain you on a Friday night. And it'll feel alright. The party is all over on Red United TV as always on a Friday night, guys. I'd like to wish you peace and love. I'll see you next week. See you on Monday at 8 p.m. And of course, we'll see you next week, Friday at 9 p.m. as well, guys. It's peace, love, and keep it united. And also remember to keep it red united, guys. Peace.